We may think we have freedom, but so much of our lives are operated by subconscious habits that were programmed into us growing up. True freedom comes from deprogramming the ego from limiting habits and beliefs and connecting with the light of the soul. But unless we understand how the matrix works, we will forever keep ourselves stuck. To the ancient Eastern mystics, the matrix is called Maya, the great cosmic measurer. Maya is that which portions out cosmic energy into time and space. And there are dimensions that are timeless and spaceless, as well as those wherein time and space operate in extremely linear and restricted ways. Within this cosmic measuring field that produces all things, we have three essential states that the field operates by. One is a path that moves upwards towards the original source, the limitless light. One is a path of activity, not moving upwards or downwards, but circling around within itself. And one is a path of downward motion, moving away from the luminous lightness and into the heaviness of dark, as well as chaos. In the Eastern scriptures, these are called sattva, rajas, and tamas, translating essentially to ascension, activity, and inertia. These states operate through all aspects of the reality field, found within every aspect of our own personal lives, as well as everywhere in nature, and even across the whole spiraling galaxy itself. Sattva, the upwards path, is a state of enlightenment and conscious exploration towards something greater. It is a movement upwards towards something higher, and those who seek a sattvic path are calm, meditative, peaceful, and strive to live a virtuous life aligned with the will of the soul, or at the very least, seek to connect with the soul and the beyond. The rajasic is very common in today's world, much more than sattva. The human reality is filled with activity, everyone constantly pushing to do something, to gain something, earn something, be entertained, achieve a desire, taste something delicious, and so on. The rajasic are those who fill their lives with activity or consider anything beyond the multitude of to-dos which fill their calendar or the desires of their bodies. Those who push too far into the realm of rajas end up falling ill to disease due to an imbalance of energy within different aspects of their body of consciousness. Finally, there is tamas, the state of inertia, dissension, and heaviness. This is a state of ignorance reserved for those who are falling away from their own inner light and into a state of death. Tamasic people are those who do not have much inner willpower or inner fire burning. They struggle to see hope for themselves and often see life as bleak, meaningless, empty, or hopeless. They are considered by others as energy vampires, draining the joy from the room when they enter due to the heaviness that weighs upon their soul and their feelings and their minds, especially if it is very serious. Most people operate between some degree of all of these states. Certain individuals may be nearly 100% in one of the three, but for most, there is some element of balance between these three states. We all go through phases of feeling very heavy, being very active, and even self-reflective and ascending into a higher understanding. However, those who do want to live a better life and in a more harmonious world would find it valuable to practice discipline and self-control to engage in a more sattvic life, meaning to take time for self-reflection, seeking higher consciousness, greater understanding of the nature of reality. And to do this is simple by spending time with other spiritual seekers in good company, taking time for meditation, and reading books by wise authors all help to move an individual from the tamasic and rajasic into the sattvic. It has been described by many great masters and teachers that we, human beings, are not just physical beings, but souls wrapped in a material form, given the opportunity to experience anything that we want in our human life. We can chase after pleasures, riches, vitality, health and strength, or even union with the divine. We have been given a body of consciousness 
layers upon layers of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy in various densities. And what we choose to do with it is up to us. Most of us do not realize the latent potential of the body of consciousness, also regarded as a body temple, as in the temple that houses the soul. The body temple is a limitless creative biological energy machine for the soul to operate. This is a simple understanding, but it must be elaborated upon in order for us to know ourselves better. And there are many dimensions and bodies within each of those, such as bodies for the mental, physical, emotional, and willpower. But these three greater forms, the physical, astral, and causal bodies, correspond to different dimensions of our self throughout all aspects of reality. And the soul is wrapped under the encasement of all of them. When the physical body dies, this does not mean that the astral body or the causal body dies, but returns to their place of origin to continue on the journey through infinity in the network of the cosmic mind. These higher worlds, such as the astral world or the causal world from where those bodies descend, are relative to what many cultures and religions today might describe as the kingdom of heaven, hell, or other similar concepts. The proper understanding of this illuminates hidden teachings that are found in spiritual traditions, both Western, Eastern, and shamanic. Were one to read the Bible through a mystical lens, they would certainly come to see that even Jesus himself spoke of these things, just as other masters had described in their own ways before and after him. We should know that spiritual masters and teachers appear at key points in time to translate and provide context and wisdom to the people of that present age. The teachings of Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, and even Mohammed appeared at a point in time relative to the needs of the people at that stage in history, and their timeless teachings and wisdom guidance has lasted for many generations due to the potency of their love. For us, we each have the opportunity to create a life for ourselves that is worth living, filled with exactly what we want. But in order to have the life of our dreams, we have to recognize something very important, that at the highest levels of existence, the cosmic dream we are all experiencing is a thought within what many have described as the mind of God or the cosmic mind, that through mind, all things come into being and that reality itself is mind stuff in various densities of energy, which through the cosmic law and cosmic consciousness have been converted or concentrated together into denser forms, which we call matter, such as the atoms of the periodic table. Yet all of matter as we understand through science is still simply pure energy, radiating potential which manifests itself through both the thoughts of the cosmic mind as well as the individual minds of all living things, which is why the biblical scriptures say we are made in the image of the creator. While some life forms are incredibly simple in their mental formatting, other creatures are far more advanced and evolved, and we are one of those species. We have the capacity to create and destroy. We have the true spirit of the creative power within us. And through our thoughts, feelings, willpower, and consciousness, we direct our energy and our words through action that manipulates the world to our liking or to our detriment. Because we do not actively recognize just how much our minds affect reality, we have become blunderous in our ability to create. We consistently break the cosmic laws of harmony. We fail to operate by truth, love, and authenticity. And in this way, we manifest wars, disease, famine, and great suffering for ourselves, and even the other species that we share this world with. This is not described to scare you. You have a strong creative presence and power within you, but in order to access it to greater degrees, you must understand several very important things. You may already know some of these, intuitively or deeply rooted in your being, but if you can anchor to all of them firmly, you will become an avatar of your soul. There are three ways to attain union with your higher self. The first is to act each day in selfless service to the greater good of all. 
by realizing that life is not about you, but about the welfare and benefit of everyone, we put aside our own personal desires and become instruments of goodness and grace in the world. Doing so lifts us up to higher levels of understanding, caring, and ability. And those who never cease to lift the world up above them find that the world never tires of lifting them up all the same. The second way is to practice self-control in everything that we do, to be moderate in our approach to life and to not overdo things. Whether it's working out too hard, eating too much, having too much sex, or simultaneously never working out, starving ourselves out of body shame or shying away from love or speaking with others. Those who consider themselves introverts might benefit from speaking up a little more and breaking out of their cages to engage in a more active social life, showing up in a new, inspiring way. And those who are extroverts, always talking and partying and so on, might benefit by closing their mouths and listening once in a while, so as to gain a higher understanding of what's going on all around them and having a bit more compassion towards those in their present company. Life is about balance. Without balance, we will never be free. The third way to become united with the soul is through meditation and prayer. All of reality exists through different frequencies of vibration. But when we are apathetic in sloth or too busy in all the activities of life, the vibrational frequencies create a lot of inner noise. Our thoughts are constantly moving, vibrating with intensity or pulling on us to cave to the pleasures of the flesh. And in that state, we are unable to know the purity of stillness. It is through the practice of meditation and prayer that we calm the heart and mind, bringing us to states of peace and harmony within, wherein we can feel the resonance of the soul and the voice of the higher self or the spirit echoing through us. We should be mindful in everything that we do, remembering that all things are one and we do not exist for ourselves or by ourselves but by the grace of the creative forces that move through everything. We may call this supreme power by any name, but to attempt to name or describe it limits it because it is so infinite and all encompassing that our physical words cannot do it justice. So when someone says God, spirit, source, divinity, cosmic consciousness, self, or any such words, we must understand that we are attempting to communicate about something that can only be understood by direct contact and experience with this pure beingness, which is the source of all things in the unified field of reality. That which brought all of matter and energy into existence. And so within this matrix of reality, this cosmic dream, this game of illusion and wonder, who are you? Who are you designing yourself to be? Are you living the life of your dreams or merely getting what you get because you did what others asked you to do? Go within, know thyself, and become who you were born to be. But wait, who were you born to be? How can you know your purpose? For some, the answer is simple, but for many, it's not so clear. Knowing the self is a process of translating wisdom between body, mind, and soul. But this can be especially difficult when the world around us seems often designed to confuse our ability to discern correctly and see beyond our suffering. But it doesn't have to be difficult to cut through the BS and stand for something real. To support you in this empowerment, we present you with a new translation of this ancient spiritual masterpiece the Tao Te Ching, a guidebook to inner mastery and personal transcendence. This edition is unique in that we went back to the Chinese text in its original writing, translating the meaning character by character without relying on other modern translations in order to bring you an interpretation that unites ancient wisdom with the new scientific understanding of the day. If you are personally seeking to truly break free, know yourself, and live from a place within of inner virtue and mastery, 
please check out the Spirit Verse edition of the Tao Te Ching, available now. You'll find links in the description to learn more and see just how living with the Tao changes your experience of life. Enjoy, and please have an amazing and beautiful day.